Now that we have a good understanding of the fabric socket design, we're ready for casting. In conventional shoulder level sockets, we are fitting the carbon fiber frame to bear the load. But in this design, the fabric is bearing the load and the stabilizing unit frame is merely just holding orientation around the body and becomes a mounting point for the prosthetic arm. Casting for this type of socket is not necessarily much different than for conventional casting methods for a solder style frame, except that we do not need to get nearly as aggressive in the delta pectoral groove and supraspinatus areas. So in casting for the stabilizing unit frame, we're basically just capturing the surface anatomy contouring so that it conforms to the body shape. I'll start by getting a good understanding of the patient's underlying anatomy. Next, don a snug fitting casting garment onto the patient. This will be helpful in both keeping the plaster off the patient's skin and hair, as well as give a surface to draw my landmarks and stabilizing unit trim lines. Next, place a cut strip under the casting garment. It's typically helpful to place this under the sound side of the casting garment, as this will be outside of our trim lines. Clearly mark any particular sensitive areas, bony prominences, and myocytes. Mark where you plan to place the shoulder joint. This is much easier to do before the cast so that you can plan on the shoulder joint attachment location accordingly. Draw the outline of the stabilizing unit frame. I want to know exactly how it will fit onto the user before we ever begin pl putting plaster on. The socket shape should run from the ductal pectoral groove down the anterior side of the torso near the midline. Uh, be sure to keep the trim lines low enough below the clavicle though as this can be a sensitive area. Then sweep the trim lines down around to the distal lateral side of the torso. For female patients, you can end the frame anterior uh, just past the deltopectoral pectoral groove and distally over the rib cage to leave room for necessary anatomy. Continue the trim lines around to the back of the torso toward the midline and then back up to the supraspinatus area. We're basically making a big circle around the patient's body with the connection point culminating at the shoulder attachment joint area. In the modifications, we'll build up the shoulder joint attachment area as needed, but these markings will show the placement location and trim line contouring. Once all the marks are in place, I'll begin by laying a plaster splint over the top of the shoulder to capture surface contouring. We don't need to get aggressive in the deltal pectoral groove or supraspinatus areas, but we do want to capture a defined contouring. Then, circumferentially wrap the patient's torso with elastic plaster. Once the plaster is set up, go back and draw vertical and horizontal alignment lines so that you can pour our cast in the proper orientation. This will also help to modify the shoulder joint mounting area in the proper orientation. Make note of the AP dimension of the cast to make sure that it doesn't lose its shape when removing or pouring with plaster. You can go back and remark any landmarks inside the socket to make sure that they transfer onto the cast. We're now ready to pour the cast and prep for our modification.